still in Article 300, General Requirements for Wiring Methods and Materials. Let's talk about 300.5, Underground Installations. Uh, two main changes here. Cover or burial depth requirements for EMT were added in Column 3, and the requirements for a warning ribbon were expanded. Okay, so 300.5, most of table of section 300.5 is table 300.5a. So cover requirements, cables and raceways must be covered in accordance with table 300.5a. So how deep does this raceway need to be buried or how much cover does it have to have on top of it? That's the main subject of 300.5. So without going through the entire table here, all locations not included below is what I want to emphasize. So yeah, you've got specific allowances if you're, if you're under a building and you've got two inches of concrete or you've got a four inch slab or you're under a street, there's different burial depth requirements or cover requirements, uh, but all locations not included below. So the general requirements, the general requirements if you're burying rigid or IMC, you need six inches of cover. Now, how do you get six inches of cover? Does that mean you dig a six inch trench? Well, no, you, you dig whatever deep trench you need and then you put your conduit in and you make sure you have six inches on top of it. Now that does include any finished paving material. So if you've got asphalt or concrete, you can include that uh, as your cover. So if you're burying rigid or IMC, you need to have at least six inches of cover. If you're doing direct buried conductors or cables like USE cable or USE-2 conductors or UF cable, you need to have 24 inches of cover. If you're burying non-metallic raceways like PVC or fiberglass conduit, RTRC, you need at least 18 inches of cover. Well, what if you're burying EMT? EMT is permitted to be used underground if you have corrosion protection, and it's always been permitted to be installed underground. So how deep are you supposed to bury it? <laughs> it's one of those things that nobody thought about. Uh, it was never addressed in the table. If, if you were to look here, uh, EMT wasn't indicated. So we had to decide, do we want to treat EMT as it relates to burial depth cover? Do we want to treat it like it's rigid and IMC? Or do we want to treat it like it's non-metallic conduit? Obviously, EMT is stronger than PVC conduit. Nobody's going to argue that but it's also not nearly as strong as rigid or IMC. Nobody's gonna argue that point either. So where does it fall? Do we need to add a new column? Instead of six inches or 18, maybe it should be 12. Well, we just decided, eh, let's bury it the same as PVC and fiberglass. Cause look, it, it's not as strong as rigid and IMC. So we're going to treat it like we treat PVC conduit or fiberglass conduit, bury it 18 inches deep. Now we also added a note to the table saying, listen, direct buried EMT must comply with 358.10 for corrosion protection. If you're installing EMT underground, you need to provide corrosion protection. All right, now, usually that's going to be corrosion resistant tape, like a four mil tape to put over it. And you can see in the photograph here, like I, I'm, a, I'm an advocate for steel conduit. I, I like steel pipes. I would not put EMT underground like this unless I was very sure that I had protected it against corrosion. So you can see why this EMT is just, it's, it's gone. So you need to make sure we're installing things correctly, suitable for the environment in which we're installing them. This could have been non-metallic raceway, but if we want the physical protection that you can only get with a steel conduit, well then rigid metal conduit or IMC might've been a better solution. Or if we really want EMT, Make sure we're protecting it against corrosion. The other thing that changed is very subtle in 300.5D, protection from physical damage. It used to say direct buried cables and conductors must comply with one through four. Now it just says underground cables and conductors, which means this now applies to conductors in a raceway. Before it was just direct buried conductors, now it includes conductors in a raceway. All right, so let's take a look at what 300.5D says. Item one, conductors or cables emerging from grade must be protected by an enclosure or raceway that goes down at least 18 inches and up at least eight feet. 
All right, so here's my conductors down here. This conduit is being used for physical protection. We need to make sure it goes up at least eight feet or you know, terminates at an enclosure, and it needs to go down at least 18 inches. So here we have a violation. That raceway needs to extend down 18 inches to make sure that we have physical protection of those conductors. The real target of this change though is item D3, because again, this used to only apply to direct buried conductors. Now it applies to conductors in a conduit as well, but only service conductors. So service conductors that are buried 18 inches or more must have a warning ribbon in the trench at least 12 inches above the conductors. It's important that you understand the definition of a service conductor. Remember, a service conductor starts at the service point and ends at the service disconnect, all right? So once the utility relinquishes control, if it's utility conductors that are under their exclusive control, those conductors do not have to comply with anything in the NEC. Certainly they don't size them the same way you and I size them because they're exempt from the NEC. So if I don't have to read the sizing rules, I don't have to read this rule because they're exempt from the NEC. But if they're service conductors, not under the exclusive control of the utility, right? Beginning at the service point, ending at the service disconnect. Then I have to have a warning ribbon if they're buried at least 18 inches and they're in a trench, this has to be installed at least 12 inches above them. Now I emphasized if they're in a trench and you might be thinking, well, give me a break stupid, when would they not be in a trench? Well, what if you're using directional boring? What if you have an existing yard or parking lot or what have you, and you're using a, a, a directional bore to get those conductors underneath the asphalt? Do you have to do a second directional bore above those conductors now and pull in a warning ribbon? No, that would be unreasonable. So if you have a trench and your conductors or raceway are 18 inches deep and they're service conductors, then you're gonna have to throw some dirt in put in a ribbon, then finish burying them. So that's the change here. The last part of this section, just since we're already talking about it, says if the raceway protecting the conductors is subject to physical damage, then it basically needs a raceway that's suitable for physical damage. So EMT or rigid or IMC or RTRC-XW, that would be reinforced thermosetting resin conduit extra wall. So that's what the XW is. It's kind of like the, the scheduling that we do for PVC conduit where we have schedule 40 versus schedule 80. Instead of 40 and 80, we have RTRC and we have RTRC XW, extra wall. You could also use schedule PVC, uh, schedule 80 PVC or equivalent. All right, so there you go. Those are the changes in 300.5.